What's going on everyone? This is Ethan, the Games Adjuster, and today we are talking about the two to four player game, Galaxy Hunters, with the expansion of New Ways to Hunt, which does bring it up to two to five players. Uh, this is a worker placement, uh, mech uh, themed mutant killing game. Um, although the theme is pretty uh, Amara thrashy, it is uh, basically a Euro at a tart, kind of a hybrid game. If you throw in the expansion, it does lean towards more of the Amerithrashi, but we'll kind of go over that in the final thoughts. So let me first go down to the table. I'll show you how it plays and then we'll come back here for those final thoughts. Here we go. To set up the game, players are going to have to put out quite a few different items. So I'm going to kind of briefly talk anatomy of the game first and then I'll get into how you play. So as you can see, there is a uh, quite a bit going on here. So you've got the board here, of course, in the middle. Uh, here on the left side, we've got some different kinds of tiles. The tiles here at the top represent merchant tiles. So these merchant tiles are going to be some upgrades we'll be talking about here in a little bit, um, but they will allow you, they'll give you a certain amount of points. Anytime you see the star symbol in the game, that represents points. And then these can be flipped over once per turn, and then you'll get to use the ability here. So you can trade this resource for a credit, or you can trade this one for two credits. All right. Um, and there's a bunch of those. These here are called medals. And medals basically represent end game conditions in which you'll score. So here you'll score six points if you have the most money out of all the players. However, to purchase this medal, you need to spend these resources here. So two of these black symbols, this yellow Y, and then this little pink favor token. And by the way, these merchant tiles also have that condition. Here this one was orange, pink, and then white. Here at the bottom are going to be the mutant tiles. This is the main antagonist of the game that the players will need to be defeating to either access planets or perhaps just gain their DNA for in-game missions. And so here, if you look, you've got a, mer um, sorry, a mutant tile. So the mutant tiles on the top will tell you what kind of DNA they'll give you. There are five kinds of DNAs. You've got pink which at, the, at the very top there, orange, purple, blue, and then the black. On the mutant tile are some numbers here representing how strong the mutant is. This is how much it will hit you for damage automatically. Uh, and then this is how much damage you will need to deal to it, the shield symbol, to defeat it. If you do, at the end of the round, after you've finished taking actions, you'll collect certain rewards. So here you'll get four of the black DNA, two of those pink favor tokens, three credits, and then five reputation. So while we're talking about... Um, tracking these things let's go down here to the player board that the players will be using so you'll notice that unlike you know maybe more traditional work placement games there are actually no resources instead you'll be tracking them on this board here uh, which is a little fiddly at first but it actually kind of makes a ton of sense so uh, what you'll do anytime you get a credit like at the beginning of the game we'll start with one credit you'll just slide it on the one if i were to get one pink favor then i'll go ahead and put that at one if i would later get two more i move it up to three You'll have a lot of spaces for the 1 through 10 resources. I would say majority of games, you're not really going to get any of these here very high. You might get your credits up to like 20 or 30 or something like that. But uh, for the most part, these main resources here, certainly radiation, hole damage, and debt, you don't want very high. So um, it's just these resources here. You might get two or three, and then you'll quickly spend them to get more upgrade tiles. So that's kind of how you're going to be tracking these things. And as the first player in this example game, I'm going to start with one credit, okay? Uh, here, I've also got a mission. As we were talking about the DNA tokens that you'll gain from defeating mutants, you'll be spending certain tokens to get in-game points here. That's five points. All right, to the left here, I have some cubes. Just for the initial explanation, I do want you to ignore these orange cubes here. These orange cubes are going to be part of an expansion we'll go over at the very end. But the main cubes here, the blue, red, and green, represent armor, ammo, and energy, respectively. There are also two uh, ships here that players can gain throughout the game. Uh, this is going to be like one that adds to your fleet. This is like a mercenary. In a two-player game, which we're going to simulate here, they are not part of the game, but they can be included in a three or more game. These dice are also expansion material. We'll talk about that later. Each player is going to start with two of these ships, and they'll gain a third one at the end of the fourth round and then you'll get your cool little mech and so we'll talk about drafting a mech here in a little bit just want to go over more anatomy but it is a really cool model uh very nice and there are 
four in the base game. Here's a look at some of the other ones here. Very cool. Very cool. And then this guy here. Also really neat. So kind of talked about everything over here. I want to pivot into some more of the stuff on the other side. So we've got the board there on the very top. We'll have the mission deck. We'll also have the mutant DNA tiles. I'm going to skip stuff at the bottom here for a second. We're going to have some specialist cards. Basically specialists are going to be another way that you can get some points. I'm sorry. Uh, well, yes, they are points, but also they're going to give you some special abilities. So we'll see here. Sorry, excuse my head. Uh, if this is specialist here, this scientist, uh, when you'll get him, you can flip him over once per turn to spend a credit and then gain uh, one extra DNA. Very cool. All right, so you'll get a lot of those. You will also have some upgrade tiles for your pilot. Your pilot can have four of these upgrade tiles. This one here, for example, says radiation immunity. You will no longer gain radiation by visiting certain planets that would normally give you it. And you can have up to four of these, and these will be swapped out at the end of each round. Uh, and then finally, over here, we're going to have some of the last few kinds of tiles. So at the very top is armor, and these will add to your mech, and will give you more spaces to put those little blue cubes and take more hits. The green represents energy, which we'll need for certain weapons. The red cube here represents more ammo that you can have. There are three types of weapons here. You've got the smaller gun, and these stats here are as follows. So here is how much damage this pistol will do. You'll need to spend one red cube and two green cubes, and you'll use that to use this to damage in combat. We'll talk about combat later. And depending on the player count, there are a certain amount of these that are going to be available. In a two-player game, you have limited resources. Uh, but in a three or more player game, there's going to be more of these copies of each one. So you can see here at the top, there's only one of each energy uh, tile, an armor tile, and only one red tile. But there would be more if a higher player count. And then finally, you've got gadgets here. And same thing, there are a lot more of these. This is where you can possibly even get the one that gives you the mercenary or the white ship to be used as an extra worker. And these do a variety of things. So like example here... And all of these, are, of course, you're spending the resources at the top. So I haven't shown you on the other ones, but it's assumed here at the top, you got the black, uh, kind of gray, orange, and yellow resource. You'll spend one of each, and then you'll have this tile on your mech. And then you can flip it over to basically give you a repair action of up to four armor cubes. And we'll show you what that looks like. All right. So main board here, comprised of several planets, of course. Here on the side, we got the reputation tracker. Here on the bottom, we got the turn tracker. And then finally, I want to talk about the player boards. So the player boards, very neat. To begin the game, players are going to do a kind of a dual draft. So the last player will start with the um, pilot cards, pilot tiles, which are going to be the left sides of these boards. And there are four in the base game. I've got a fifth one here that uh, we'll go over here and when we talk about expansion material. But you'll get the tiles, the First player will get all of the mechs, and then players will simultaneously be drafting one and then passing to the left and drafting one and passing to the left. So eventually, they'll end up with a combination of a pilot and a mech. Once you've chosen your mech, you will line it up with your pilot, and you'll collect all the cubes on your mech. Each of these mechs has a wide variety of combinations here. So this Iron Smoker here, uh, I believe he's part of the expansion, but he's got... Four blue, three red, five energy, whereas Crimson Red's got four blue, four red, four energy, pretty balanced. Here, five, four, three, less energy. Here, six, really good armor, not too good ammo, okay energy. So you can see, for instance, my guy, Marine Sphinx, only has two energy, not too great there, but he's pretty good on the other departments. These pilots have a few different things to pay attention to as well. On the left side represents an in-game bonus that you'll get seven points here if you configure your mech to match this blueprint. So if I put a gadget, a merchant, and a weapon, a uh, armor, a metal, and a gadget in this particular configuration for this whoever whatever mech I get, let's say it was like this, and I match that then I'll get seven points. And each one of these is slightly different. So here I need the actual energy. Here I need the uh, merchant down here and an energy over there and an armor and I don't even need 
uh, the gadgets at all. So depending on which one you get, you'll have that. You'll also have some different powers. So here, Katharina Lager, she has four powers on her board, but only two of them will ever be active in a game. So if I'm chained up with Iron Smoker here, the second and the fourth ability are going to be active for my game. But if I was with instead Crimson Red here, then instead only the second and the third would be available. And these give you all kinds of things. So this one here says, when I attack a pink mutant, I can do, they do one less damage to me rather. Uh, here, when I visit this particular planet, I don't have to spend three credits. Uh, here, I can get it anytime I do a repair action, I get plus two. Here, I need to spend one less energy to use this particular weapon. And so all of them vary, and there's a lot of different cool bonuses that you'll get. So that's kind of the anatomy of the game. Let's talk through how it plays. Now, it looks a little intimidating, again, but it's really not that difficult. So the game is comprised of nine rounds, and at the end of nine rounds, we're going to do some final scoring. The scoring will be each upgrade tile that you get, whether pilot or mech, is worth a point. As we showed, each blueprint that you finish here is going to be seven points. Any of these mission cards that you completed throughout the game will give you the points listed at the bottom. You will lose points for any debt that you collect, which is marked with this resource here, whole damage you collect, which is marked with this resource here, and radiation that you collect, which is that one there. And each of those is minus three points, which can be very devastating. You'll also get a point for each DNA that you collect, the, the little resources here at the top that you have left over. So any of these that you have, you'll still get a point for them, even if you don't use them as a mission. And then you'll get points for each specialist you hire. You'll get points for um, any medals that you completed. You completed these in-game conditions, like here, this one says. You'll get seven points if you made it at least this far, the reputation track. And there's some symbology there. That one's representative of this five-pointer there. Oh, sorry. And then you'll also get some points for how far you made on the reputation track. You'll track your reputation throughout the game with this token here. And then you'll kind of go there and you'll start on the left again, keep going. And then wherever you land, the highest number you can see behind you is going to be your points, the six points there. All right. And then after that, whoever has the most points is the winner. So let's talk through a turn. As I stated, there are nine turns. And at the beginning or end of certain turns, things will happen. But during the turn, you have two main phases. You've got the action phase and then the maintenance phase. So action phase is very simple. You have three workers to begin the game, which are two ships and a mech. You will unlock your third worker, as we discussed, at the end of the round four. So when you want to take your turn, you're simply going to assign your worker to one of the worker placement spots. Your ships can go to any of these docks on the board. Now, depending on your player count, some docks will be unavailable. So you'll notice here in a two-player game, this says a two plus there. And we'll zoom in on that a little bit. Sorry. All right, let's just use Planet Minion, for example. Two plus here. I can put my ship there and then take the action. Uh, these spaces in a two-player game would be off limits because it's three or more players or four or more players. And every planet has also a reputation dock. This reputation dock can be visited if you have met that criteria. So if I had my reputation here or higher, then I could go here as well. Sorry about the camera shakiness. So um, that's kind of how the work placement spot goes. So your ship tiles or tokens can always visit those empty places. If they are full, then they can no longer visit there. But your mech can visit the planet, unless the planet was full also. Your mech works just like an agent ship when taking actions. You just take the action there when available. These planets will give you a wide variety of different actions to take. Here at Planet Minion, you can shop for a metal or an energy upgrade, as we showed earlier. Here at Aurum, you'll just gain four credit. Here at Voss, you can gain six repair. Anytime you repair your mech, your mech will be losing cubes here throughout the game. So let's say, for example, my Marine Sphinx had gone through a combat and then lost some cubes here. We'll say we lost all that. When I do a repair, repair six, for example, I can choose any six cubes to gain back up to my max. So my max is five, five, two. So I might go ahead and put that there. And then I'll put these here like that. And we're back to full strength. Throughout the game, as I showed, 
you can get these energy and armor upgrades. And if you have those, as soon as you get them, you'll immediately collect those cubes. And same thing when you repair, you can choose to repair those as well, adding more cubes to those. All right. Um, and so you'll visit your planet like normal, like a normal worker placement. Again, they'll give you all kinds of things. So Matara, you can go shopping at those particular areas. At FIDA, you can gain either a pilot upgrade or a specialist by spending three credits. At Halta, you'll spend radiation. This is one of the only ways to get rid of radiation. And you'll gain an armor. Uh, at the Killith, you can gain those particular resources. So on the left side of the board, it's mostly going to be where the resources are. At Cillian, you'll kind of get that upside down U. At Morak, you'll get the kind of B, black B. You'll get the white uh, token there at Paragon. And then uh, Killith, again, you'll get that yellow Y. And down here at Prim is where you get kind of get that orange A symbol. And that's also where you also will have to gain radiation when you go to Prim. Uh, and then there are certain places where you can shop. So you can shop at Turiari. And uh, the Arcadiac portal is special because it will copy the effect of any other planet by spending two credits. All right. So let's focus now on the wasteland of Ulan. So the game is really centered around defeating these mutants. And when you want to defeat a mutant, you'll first need to have a weapon. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade our guy here, just for the sake of an example, with a couple of weapons that we think would be useful. Okay, now if we want to defeat a mutant, we will go down to the wasteland of Ulan, optionally spending three credits to refresh this. But let's just say we're not going to do that, we're going to go ahead and fight with what we have. And then we will need to spend some credits, or some cubes. So I have upgraded my mech with a couple of guns here. I've got this pistol and I've kind of got this energy rifle. If I want to defeat a mutant, I have to have at least one armor on my mech. If I have no armor, I cannot go fighting. If I do have armor, I can go and it's a very deterministic combat in the base game. All you'll do is spend the resources from your guns and do the amount of damage. So here example, this pistol requires one red, two green. Okay, so I'll spend that one red, two green. And I would do two damage. So if there was someone there that I could do two damage to, I would want to do that. Instead, I might want to go ahead and spend this one, which is also one red, two green. So we'll just do that instead. Now I can do four damage. So anyone that's four or less, I can take out. So I'll take out this orange guy here. So I'll take him out, I'll put him down, and then I will refill that space. And that's my turn. Very simple. As you refill these, there's this little marker on the board. It's clear kind of bingo chip. And this is going to track invasion. So here, when I defeated that monster, I filled it, nothing else happened. However, had I refilled that space and revealed a red tile on top, this red tile would immediately invade. So this tile would go to the number one planet, and this would move to number two. And then if this was red again, I would continue invading. So here it's black, I stop. Next person goes, let's say this person goes here, and any number of players can be at the wasteland of Ulan. And then they fight someone, let's say they take out this guy, very good for them. And now we refill. Okay, here we go, another invasion. Boom, now we stop. Sometimes you can get a bad string of invasions that'll just keep popping out on the board until you reach the point where you have to stop. And then you'll move this along. This goes all the way up to 10. If ever all the spaces are filled, the one with the red on top will just stay there. As soon as someone defeats a mutant on the board, then that one will go to that spot. Or if someone defeats someone in the wasteland of Ulan, that red one will go to that spot. Now, once these mutants are on the board, you can no longer visit that location with your ship unless you spend two ships on your action. So if you sent two agents to this planet, you could go ahead and go and do that. And it simulates one of them distracting the mutant the other one getting what you need and you'll collect your resources like normal now the other option you have is if you still have your mech available you can just go ahead and go to that planet like normal and fight them so had i instead of gone down here the board was set up i had still one energy i'm sorry two energy and one ammo i could spin that go down here defeat the monster and then get the resources like normal the, the citizens love me and reward me i still collect my resources Okay, now remember, the 
monsters are going to do damage back to you every time, no matter whether you kill them or not. And you'll always kill them in the base game because you'll never get into a fight that you can't win, but there's a chance you might lose in the expansion content, which we'll talk about shortly. So let's say I had defeated this guy. He's always going to do three damage to me, so I have to lose armor cubes. If, let's say, I had already lost cubes and I had to take three damage, I would take the two that I could, then each damage I can't take is going to be whole damage that I'll be tracking on this board here. All right, so for example, one damage there because I had two cubes left, I would move that up two to one, and then this would keep filling up, and there's no way to fix this. Now, there are two final spots I want to talk about that on your main board here, on your player board, you have a spot here at the bottom, which represents calling your mech back. So if you send a ship over here, you'll get to bring your mech off the board and then take another action with it later. Or if you go here, you can always just repair any four things of your choice. So you know, before next fight, I might go ahead and take some armor back and maybe next turn I'll go on the board and get some other stuff and get some more energy, etc. All right. Um, there are some limits on upgrades. So we talked earlier, there's only four upgrades that you can get on your pilot. These pilot upgrades always kind of go here around this side of the pilot board, but there are uh, nine total mech upgrades you can get. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then that's the most you can get. If you ever need to get more than that, you'll need to replace something else, but you hopefully don't want to do that because these things are kind of expensive. They're hard to get those resources. All right, so last thing we'll talk about base game wise is going to be what happens during these different turns. So the first turn, you play out like normal. Second turn, play out like normal. And third turn, and in this seventh turn, there will be an invasion. So when the invasion happens, at the beginning of the round, we're going to flip out the top mutant there and put it into the next space where there would be a token. If the next one was red, just like when we're normally refilling the wasteland, then we do continue with the invasion until we don't have a red on top of the stack, and then we're done. In the at the end of the fourth round, so at the end of the maintenance phase, you will get your next uh, your fourth ship on this round, and then in the maintenance phase of the fifth and the final round, you will also have to pay three credits per ship that you have. If you cannot pay them, you'll pay as much as you can, and then for each one you cannot pay for, you'll collect a debt. And a debt again is worth negative three points. So you need to make sure you have enough money in each of those rounds. Uh, and then these two rounds here play out like normal. Now, turn order is a little bit interesting. It's going to be tracked on this reputation track. So let's say, for example, red was here, yellow was here later in the game. Then the person who always goes first each round is going to be the person furthest to the left and closest to the top. So here, yellow, yellow would go first. If it was like this, of course, yellow would go first. If it was like this, red would go first. Um, and then if they are ever on the same stack, then whoever's on top goes first, okay? Because they got there last. All right, um, so that's pretty much it. I'm not going to go through every single tile. They do a wide variety of things. Um, you'll basically play everybody will take actions until they spend all their workers. Then we'll go through the maintenance phase. We will check, we'll buy new missions. So at the top of the board here are the mission cards. And at the end of each round, you can spend pink favor tokens to buy more of those. Uh, so one favor token to buy a new one, and then after everyone's bought one or chose not to or passed, then we'll wipe out all of these, put out some new ones. We'll wipe out all of the pilot upgrades over here, put some new ones there, wipe out the specialist, put new ones there, and then we will begin the next round. And then you'll deal with some of those different circumstances at the end of the phase, get your ship, or pay your credits for your ships, whatever have you. All right, and you'll do that over nine rounds. At the end of the nine rounds, you'll count all your points, lose points for debt, hull, and radiation, and whoever has the most points is the winner. So, finally, let's talk about these, uh, and you'll, I'm sorry, you'll collect your rewards in the maintenance phase as well. So you won't get any of this stuff until they're done. This, let's say this is one I defeated earlier, 3-3. Three, three. I will get the two blue DNA, I'll get the pink favor, get three credits, and then I'll move up once on the reputation track. And you should pay attention. Some of your bonuses here will let you get, um, you know, extra reputation defeating certain people or what have you, some up, or certain upgrades. And then anyone that you defeat gets discarded. 
And then once the whole stack runs out, then we'll reshuffle them all and then start again if we need to. Two-player game, that may not happen. Four-player game, definitely will. So now that we've done that, I want to cover some expansion content because it does change the game quite a bit. So the first thing that the expansion adds is, again, a fifth player. So there is one more pilot, one more mech. That's really cool for variety's sake. It also adds some new tiles, which are going to be these battery tiles. And so these battery tiles here are going to be used for re-rolling dice. And there's two basic ones and then four and the really good upgrade ones. Well, where are these going to be stored? Well, you're also going to get a new board to put on the side of your mech that already comes with battery. And depending on which board you get, you'll have high battery, maybe a little bit more armor, maybe not as much armor, you know, ooh, even more armor but less batteries. Not very good batteries, but really good armor. So this will mix and match. So basically, you'll drop these just like you do the other ones. And rather than just have your pilot and your mech board, you will now have this third board to sit on the side of your mech. So let's go ahead and this is an example. We'll put this one here. Oop. We'll fill in our stuff so we would get two and five. And there you go. So now, when we play the game, just like normal, we can have the nine upgrades. But you'll also start with those batteries. And depending on the player color, so I'm going to choose to be the red player, you're going to get two ambassadors that are tied to your color. So these ambassadors can be deployed onto the spaces doing an in-turn action once per turn by spending two credits. Once these go onto a planet, let's say we couldn't put them here on Aurum, when other, planets, when other players visit that planet, you can get a certain thing. Then you can always spend a credit to flip it over and then also gain that benefit. Okay, and there are two of these, and if they're deployed, you'll get two points at the end of the game. Also, these batteries, again, help you re-roll dice. So now, in combat, it's not going to be an automatic win. Instead, you'll need to roll dice. So, let's just use our same guy as an example. We'll put him here. So he's got three attack three defense. That's the guy we're going to have to deal with. Actually, we'll put him here. All right, let's say we're going to use this gun here. Pretend I still had enough energy to do that. So we're full. Everything's full. Oh, I need to hit three hits. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just hedge my bets and make sure I do well. So I'm going to spend one ammo and two energy. Okay, this should give me now, normally would do four damage I'm done in the base game. Well, instead, now it will give me four dice. So these dice have three different sides. Two of the sides are skulls, which are complete misses, bad. Three of the sides are single hits. One of the sides is a double hit. Not only is it a double hit, but it is an exploding dice. So if I roll, let's say, something like this, that's two misses, one hit, and two hits, cool, and another die. So now I add a fifth die for free, and I'll roll that. If I rolled exploding again, then I would get another die and keep going until I rolled out and I was done. Now, once per roll, you can re-roll your dice by spending one battery to re-roll as many dice as you would like to. After you've done that, you'll consult and see whether you want or not. So let's say this was my roll. All right, that's one, two, three hits, two misses. That's all I needed. Cool, I defeated the monster just like normal. I'll put it in my area. And that would be it. And I would always need to take those hits just like in the base game. So three total hits. Take it off my board. Uh, now, any misses you roll, one of them you can assign to this little wheel over here. And this will give you basically some immediate bonuses, some kind of, you know, sorry, th thanks for trying kind of thing. The top here will let you repair. This will get you a credit. This lets you switch one DNA for another. Let you get rid of a radiation gains one reputation or you can spend a pink favor to repair uh, or to get any resource that you want uh, which is the again the, the black the white the gray the orange the yellow all right uh, and that's basically the main difference here so there is a new space also that you can go to in the base game there's really no way to get rid of debt there's really no way to get hold uh, rid of hole damage you could get rid of radiation by spending it at planet halta but the whole damage is debt you kind of stuck with Debt's still the same thing. You really know where to get rid of that. However, here you can spend three credits to get rid of two hull damage. So that's one way that you can 
go into the fight. You may not win more with the dice, right? You're going to take some hits and not get anything out of it. So not only do you get the miss die here, but you can also repair some of that whole damage that you would be taking if you kind of go through all your armor pretty quickly. All right, and beyond that, same thing. You can't go into a fight if you don't have at least one armor. You can go in willingly and just kind of lose a lot of hits, but just take them out and then spend the credits to heal it back. And there you go. That's pretty much how you play. All right, let's briefly talk storage. So the game actually comes with a pretty decent insert. It's not perfect, though. A couple of things that are minor, super minor nitpicks. Um, so I actually have the New Ways to Hunt expansion comes with its own rule book. came with its own box. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to put it all in one. It fits fine. There's actually a stretch goal box. It comes with four more mechs and four more pilots. Wish I could find it. If someone has it or knows a way to find it, let me know in the comments below. If you get that, not, definitely not going to fit everything, I'm pretty sure. I don't have it though, so I couldn't really speak for sure, but definitely the expansion base game, you can't fit all in here. So the base game does come with wells for the specific mechs. The fifth mech I do have tucked in here in this well down here. Uh, all the tiles fit pretty good here, except you're going to have some overflow. Um, so I just chose to put the merchant tiles, there's only six of those down here, and put the armor ones with the, uh, or the energy battery ones with the other armor and stuff. But they're pretty much going to fit, just not perfect. All the cubes do fit in one nice bag here. I, these are some of my own bags, by the way. So we got all the DNA in its own bag. And then we can put all the player pieces. Uh, as many as you can in this area here. So we'll go ahead and stuff three of them there. And then you're going to have actually a couple of cool little spots. So this spot here is for the mechs. And the mechs do fit all five of them. It's kind of tight. It's a little bit overhang. If you kind of push down these DNA tiles, it'll fit a little better. And then the pilots also fit here. Same kind of thing. You just kind of push down a little bit. And then you can go ahead and put this on there. And it's a nice little plastic sheet that kind of holds everything in, especially with the, the slight bit of overflow here. After that, you've got the board, the four-fold board. Put that there. There are now five of these tiles, one for each player. I'm able to put some of these guys on the side here, the dice, two of the extra players, and some of these neutral guys. Finally, the rule books. And there you go. That is how you can store it away. So now let's get to those final thoughts. Okay, there you go. So let's talk about it. We'll start with the theme. I love the theme. I, um, if you've watched the channel, um, you know I'm a sucker for mobsters, stuff like that. But I'm also a sucker for like mechs. I think uh, most guys are honestly. Uh, I grew up watching like Gundam and Gundam Wing and G Gundam and all the kinds of Gundam shows that there are. There's several iterations. Uh, and this just, look at the cover. I mean, it just immediately screams like Kaiju slash Gundam. It's just cool. So with that in mind, uh, that really what's kind of drove my interest in the game. Oftentimes I'm getting games on recommendations from uh, content creators that I love and, and just general reading into and researching of games. But the theme never really speaks to me. You know, some of the best recommended worker placement games, you know, example, game I love, Feast for Odin. Is the theme really there? Not particularly, right? Like, you know, same thing like Agricola, a lot of the Uwe games, um, some of the other worker placement games that are really high up, Lords of Waterdeep, I mean, kind of the theme. I didn't really like that game to begin with, but what I'm saying is the theme on some of these Euro games isn't that strong. And here, you know, it's not super strong either, but it's much more interesting, in my opinion. And this is totally a subjective thing. A lot of people will like their Euros kind of dry, don't really mind it. They're just there for the mechanisms. I'm there for the mechanisms. I really don't mind the dry Euros. Like I said, Feast for Odin, if you watch my top 100, very high up. I love Feast for Odin. But the mechanism pushes me through the, game, the theme, which is kind of non-existent. Here, I feel like they combine well. I like that it's a really cool theme that I'm into. That brings me to the game. It makes it easier for me to sell it to other people who maybe are like me and kind of like these things. And I can say, hey, look, not only are we going to play a Euro game, but we're going to be killing monsters and getting weapons and working with these cool mech minis. And you don't need the mech minis to be cool. Even little ship wooden meeples are cool. But it's just a cooler theme. Now, thematically, as far as integration with the mechanisms, it's kind of there because if the mutants are on the planet, you need to send two ships to get there. So you can still do it. 
It's just one of them is kind of doing the decoy distraction, kind of thematic. Um, why the resources are what they are, maybe in, in the world that this is in, which I didn't really read into that part of it. Um, maybe it makes more sense. Uh, you know, it's fine. It could have just been like, could have been anything, right? Could have been like space junk and blue orbs or whatever, but they just kind of chose these specific kinds of resources, which is fine. It's tied to the game and um, maybe a, it's a little confusing. We'll kind of get to that later in production and rules, but um, for the most part, yeah, I think what you're doing is thematic. You got to get resources to buy the equipment that you need. When you go hunting, you got to have a weapon to do the hunt. You're not going to go into a fight without armor. So for all that, it does make sense. And the dice rolling adds more to that theme because in the base game, you're just going to go for the easy kill. And there is really no not winning the fight. You know what you're getting into. With the dice, it does kind of add more of that theme to it because, you know, anything could happen in a gunfight, right? So you can go, get to the monster's world, go to that wasteland, something unexpected happens thematically, and maybe you didn't kill it when you thought you would. That does happen, right? So I kind of like that too. Um, so anyways, theme plus for me. Going on to the production for the most part, it's good. There's just a couple of things that a little bothers them. So inserts nice. I showed them the storage there. Some of the pieces don't fit like perfectly. Um, just like a little bit of overflow. Even without those extra tiles, the tiles still kind of seem to overflow a little bit, but it's not that big a deal. Um, I love the mechs. They're not the greatest mechs of all time. There are other better, better minis out there, but these are really cool and really big, and I really like them. So that's good. Cubes are fine. Tiles are fine. It's really just... A couple of graphic design things. So the resources, there's quite a few of them. You've got debt, hull damage, radiation, uh, credits. You've got the resources that you have in cubes, which aren't on your resource board. And then you've got like the five or six resources that you track. So could they have cut those down maybe a little bit? Probably. Um, at first, I really didn't love that board that you track your resources on. I kind of grew to like it actually because Oftentimes you're hoarding a bunch of crap and you're grabbing a bunch of things. You're having to be like, hey, Billy, can you throw me one of those green things? Okay, cool. And then I'm throwing it back to you to spend it. Here you can just easily move it up and down. And I like that it's not one singular track. And they do kind of give you extra knowing that, hey, sometimes you're going to have maybe four things with four. So you can put, you know, one disc in each one. The problem becomes with it. And like I said, I kind of came to like that. I didn't like the symbology and some of the colors that were chosen. So... Sometimes you're looking from far away these tiles and what you need to spend. And it's like the black B versus like the white P versus like the gray U. And yes, it's got the line on there that kind of tells you which one it is. So you can pay attention to that. But the colors on the tiles anyways kind of look kind of close. So there was a couple of times, not just me, where other players and myself were like, oh, cool, I've got everything. And you look at the tile and you're like, oh, wait, I needed the U, gray U, not the black B. My bad. Like it looked kind of black from here so not nitpicky also like the a and the y like there's an orange a and like a yellow y and I'm, I'm using letters they're not really like alphabetical letters they're kind of like takes on that i think but yeah but again from a distance it's kind of like if you're kind of looking at the color really just as a quick glance you think you have it, and you go to pull it like oh nope i don't have that oh i got the wrong thing maybe or i have to spend an extra turn to go get the resource i need so that can be a little frustrating um just those sheets there, if they would have maybe looked a little neater than just like a black thing, that could have been a little cooler. Um, and then I did the little bingo things too. Not a huge fan of that. Like I know why they're clear is so you can see which one, which spot you're under. But honestly, I would have just had like prefer like a wooden disc because they kind of feel like they kind of get lost sometimes, especially like the mutant one because it's clear and it's on the board. It's like kind of clear. It's like a... There's a little bit of a color to it. But when you're moving it around, you're like, okay, mutant, mutant, mutant. Okay, then you wait a while and forget. And then you're like, wait, where is the thing? And you're looking around like, oh, there it is. It's on six. You know, so little things like that kind of bothered me. Uh, but for the most part, you know, I think it's pretty good. I think the tile thickness is cool. The mechs look good. The little wooden meeple look good. The board looks cool. It's really colorful. It's space, so there's a lot of black. If you know, some people don't like just black and planets, but I don't mind it. I think the planets give it some pop, and I like the artwork. The mutants are kind of all the same, really. So maybe that's kind of a little downgrade, but it's fine. Like, it's a Euroy game, so I don't expect there to be like a huge emphasis on the mutants. They're there. They're cool, but 
it, they're just tiles and that's fine. I don't really need them to be anything more than that. And I don't really mind that they're different artwork, just different colors. Maybe the colors too. There's like a purple and a pink DNA. They're kind of close. And they, again, also have symbols on them for the color challenge. So that could just be me, but I feel like maybe more distinct colors would have been nicer. Or maybe even different like symbols in them. So instead of just being circles with symbols in them, like one's a square, one's a triangle, one's a rectangle, you know, something like that. Anyways, so overall, mostly good, just a couple nitpicks. Rules, same thing. Mostly good. My biggest nitpick is as much as there is going on, much symbology as there is, there's no player aids. Why there's no player aids, I have no idea. It's not even on the back of the rulebook, I don't believe. Now, the rulebook itself does a good job of explaining the game. And at the back, it basically explains all the specialists and merchantiles and metal gold. Everything is explained. So that's cool. I don't necessarily need that for every player because it's in the rule book, but maybe just a cheat sheet like, hey, what does this symbol mean would help because that helps other people figure out like, oh, the dollar sign means, you know, month, you know, credit means credit, obviously, but the dollar signs like, oh, well, tied to money, probably not that hard, pretty intuitive, like, oh, plus dollar sign, probably most money, check it. Yeah, it is most money. Something like that would have been cool to know, though. Um, or generally speaking, like all the merchant tiles need this for sure. I think they all need like a favor token, the pink one. But they may also need other things. Or, you know, this is your turn sequence. This is combat sequence. You pick your target. You take the damage. You apply the damage. Take armor or hull. Then you do the damage to it. Or with the expansion, give me a, a new sheet that said, now you roll the dice. There's none of that really. So unless you internalize that, you're going to have to go back to the rule book a few times and just remind yourself of it and then go from there. And it's, again, not that hard. But why not put a player in, right? This just feels like... Sometimes it's just an obvious miss to me. And maybe it's because they were like, hey, there's already all the hottest stuff on the board on the on the table. Let's not put too much more. But that's just something like, hey, what's another, you know, four by six card or something really at this point. So that's my biggest thing on the rules overall, though. I think it's they're pretty good. Uh, as far as the gameplay goes, I really like it. So it's a worker placement game through and through. You go over here, get the resources you need. You go over there, get the resources you need. You go over here with your mech, cash them in, basically. You're cashing in these resources to either fight the people with the cube resources or to get the upgrades necessary to fight them with the token resources. And that's fine. And I like that you have every tile that you're going to see in the game is out at the beginning of the game, all the upgrades. The only thing you're not going to see is a certain specialist and pilot upgrade tiles because those will come out throughout the game. And then you may be missing some of the gadgets. I'm not really 100% sure. I think in three or four, you definitely have all of them. Two player may not see all of them. I don't remember. But that's it, really. That's cool. And so you can already from the beginning be like, okay, I'm really going to go for that. I really want the extra armor because my armor's not that good. I want to overcompensate for that. Or, or my energy's not really good like my guy, Marine Sphinx, didn't have very good energy. So right away I was like, okay, I need to get the stuff I need to get that four energy upgrade and put it on my board. Not only do I want to put it on my board, I can have nine mech upgrades, but I want to put it in the spot that matches my blueprint, if my blueprint needs it. If it doesn't need it, then I want to put it in a spot that doesn't go with something I do need to get that blueprint bonus. And you're pretty much always going to want to go for that, really. I don't see a situation where you wouldn't. There's really no impact as far as where you put your things other than what you put, because you can only ever have nine tiles. So, I don't know, that may be kind of like a weird scoring thing, like, why would you ever not do it other than it doesn't maybe fit with your strategy? But you kind of need a little bit of everything, honestly. Uh, the ones that feel maybe most superfluous to me would be like the merchantiles. I really didn't really use those in my games. Uh, but the weapons, definitely. I don't see how you win without fighting some mutants. And boosting your armor, ammo, or energy, depending on which one you are deficient in, definitely probably need to do that. So if those work in your blueprint, cool. If they don't, you're still going to need them anyways. And there's probably one or two of them do anyways. So that's, that's just one thing. But... I do like that it gives you more ways to score. I also like that when you go into the fight, you're like, ugh, I can go win this fight, but I don't have to take some hull damage. And in the base game, you really can't get rid of that. Now, with the expansion, they fix that, so it kind of maybe more entices you. Like, hey, I'll, I'll, I don't mind taking hull damage. I'll certainly have a chance to get rid of that, right, by the end of the game. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I do like that you can kind of push your luck that way, especially with the dice combat. Now, here, probably the big crux for people deciding to get the game or not. Base game, deterministic combat, there's no way around it. Expansion, you can choose. You want to play with the dice, not play with the dice, maybe just take the mech from the expansion, that's it. So, which do I like better? 
I feel like I like the dice better, honestly. I think um, it kind of reminds me of like uh, Champs of Midgard, another very good work placement game where you have these dice that you gather through different means and then you go on your exploration and you roll the dice and you're hoping that you get what you need to defeat the Jarls and the monsters or whatever, but you may not. And I like that. That's thematic to the game because you don't know going out there to that wasteland, you know, how it's going to go. You might think I'm fully prepared. I've got all my weapons loaded, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, something happens, something gets jammed, whatever, and things go sideways. So I like that there's a little bit of that luck factor. And, um, you know, I like the dice. They're really good quality. I like rolling them. So, yeah, I think the dice are cool. Adds a little bit more. And so I don't think it's a must, though. I was totally fine with the base game, but I like the base game enough that I wanted to get the expansion just for really the extra mech. And the dice ended up being pretty cool. So with that said, again, I think either way, you'll still like it. I personally like the dice, so I think if you're going to get the game, I would recommend you get the expansion, but that's up to you. Um, other gameplay things, maybe I didn't like, just um, maybe again, one, two mini resources possibly, just the board's a little tight to move them around, and then you're just like, oh, I need the gray, not the black, you know, something a little like that. Maybe some of those could have been substituted for the other and just cut one out altogether, minor thing there. Um I do like that, depending on your reputation, you can get access to spots that other people can't get to. And that's pretty cool, especially like in a two-player game. There's pretty much only one spot on each planet. So you might really want to get your reputation up so that you always kind of have your own spot that your opponent can't get to maybe if their reputation isn't as high. And that's cool too. So a lot of stuff that you've probably seen, but it all works together well. Um, and the time-wise, it's a little long, I will say. So it's nine rounds. If you're playing a four-player game, it's... It says 30 minutes per player. That's about right. First game might take you like three hours, but you can probably get that down once everybody knows what they're doing. It's not a hard game. So the setup is a little bit because you got to do the draft. Everybody gets a mission. You're putting out all those tiles so everybody can see it. Again, new player thing, you might be like, well, that's what this one means. And a lot of questions have been like, well, what does this one mean? Or what resource do I need? Because they're small too. Maybe this production thing, they are a little small on those tiles. Um, but I get why they're that way and the tiles aren't humongous because it's a table hawk and that's again a production thing but i'd rather know everything and be able to see it all at least okay if i pick it up then have them be even bigger and even more of a table hawk so it's a trade-off but there you go uh the last thing is variety and it's i worry about it so you're going to see the same mutants every time nothing's really going to change there you get all the same upgrades depending on the player count. So every two-player game, same upgrades, three, four, same thing. The variety maybe is, well, not maybe, it's going to come from the combinations of mechs, ambassador tile things, and pilots. So that three-person combination, if you have the expansion, or two-person combination, if you just have the base game, is going to be all the different configurations. So each pilot can be with the four different mechs, and each mech can be with the four different pilots. So do the math, I don't know what it is, but... There's a, quite a few combinations there because they change what powers you get. And that may influence which weapons you go for or which mutants you target and which missions you get, etc. It's not a huge change. Some powers you may not even use. I was one where I played where it was like in the Cillian planet. I get extra stuff. I didn't really go there that often, honestly. It was just like, okay, cool. I get four instead of three or whatever, or three instead of two. But eh, it, it was okay. But still, if I get a different mech, not only will I get different powers, but also... What is my mech good at? If my mech is terrible at armor, I really probably need to invest in the armor quickly. And if I don't get it, that's going to really change my game because now fighting is going to be a lot more dangerous for me if someone else got that armor first. So um, that's where the variety is going to come from. I do wish, again, like I had, you said, that I can get the stretch goal box. I mentioned that the storage part because I would have liked four more pilots, four more mechs. And as far as I can tell, like there was Kickstarter only... If you didn't get on it, you're not going to find it unless you go on eBay and pay some outrageous price, which I'm not prepared to do. So uh, I wish that was available as it stands, though. Five mechs, five uh, pilots, and the five extra tiles, which are color-based, which is maybe one flaw, too. Like, why not just put them gray and then everybody just, you know, takes two? I don't know. I did, that seemed kind of weird. Um, but, yeah, with all that said, I do like the game quite a bit. So this one, I'm definitely hanging on to. I got the expansion. I really enjoy it. I'm going to give it a solid 8 out of 10 for me. There's a couple of production things, a couple of rules things, like why no rules 8? It's very annoying. I do worry about the variety, 
But with all that said, I really like it. I like a thematic worker placement game. It's kind of a hybrid now with a dice game, and I like that too. And so, yeah, I mean, I think if you're into mechs, if you're into Gundam and stuff, it's not like Gundam the board game, but I like that it kind of lets me look like I'm playing with the Gundam or something in a game. Uh, it's more like fighting monsters, kind of kaiju stuff, but that's cool too for me as well. So if that sounds interesting to you, definitely give it a try. Galaxy Hunter, solid 8 out of 10 from me. If you played it, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you thought about the dice versus non-dice combat. Uh, if you know where to find the stretch goal box, let me know that as well. I would love to get that. Um, but otherwise, I've been the Games Adjuster. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you on the next one.